add new contact form options. We can name our sample contact form anything we want. As an example. Or we can name it to anything we want. Okay. By default, contact form 7 will auto-generate certain fields for you. You can, if you want, delete everything here. Or you can leave certain things. You can copy and paste things below and then change things accordingly. That would then be a text field and so on, right? Your address and so on. The important thing to understand about contact form 7 and how to use it is keeping an eye on these asterisk symbols. When you see an asterisk symbol, basically contact form 7 is making that field a required field. Okay, let's actually delete this portion. I'll actually show you what that means. Let's say label your message and then let's close that label tag and in between let's add a text area text area is basically a text area we can change things here if we want default value we can say anything we want we can place a placeholder as we can see if I uncheck it the placeholder is gone ID attribute and class attribute let's make that an ID attribute of my form text area these are optional ID attribute and class attribute is to do with styling which I will actually show you in a second as well if you're using ID, perhaps you don't want to use class attribute, but the option is there for you. Let's leave this as such and let's insert that tag. Keep an eye on the required field checkbox. Because we've checked that, contact form 7 should add an asterisk symbol as we're seeing. Now, that's a required field. In the subject field example, it does not have the asterisk symbol here next to text field make sense because it does not have the asterisk that means a website visitor who's filling the form they don't need to place the subject information for the contact form 7 to work now you can do all sorts of things and it is a very powerful plugin let's imagine this scenario let's imagine you'd like to add a drop down menu option all you then would have to do is press on drop down menu field if you want it to be a required field, you can check it as such. You can say option one. Surely you place anything you want. One per line. Option two. Option three. Allow multiple selections of that drop down menu. If you want, you can say yes, do so. Insert blank item as the first option. Perhaps that may be smart. ID attribute, class attribute, once again, is to do with styles. Let's leave this as it is. Remember, anytime you add these fields, for you to receive them in your email client, what we need to do is make sure, depending on what we're creating, that is also within the mail field. I'll show you what that is as well. Let's insert this drop down menu field. Let's insert it. As you can see, we can say, you know what? Select your option. Let's do that. Now, as I've said, menu hyphen 20 is an important um, identifier for that field. That means in your mail tab, for you to receive that in your email client, you need to then 
make sure you place that within brackets like so now if you were to save this form let's save it that means in this example i'm going to receive this yeah okay let's take a look at this here because i deleted what was there before with text area for me to receive that i need to then say okay that's form text area that i've created now when someone fills in the details and sends i will receive that down my end now taking a look at this mail tab options what we're seeing within brackets is what you will receive okay so you may by default have something like this wordpress at your domain.com and so on but if you want you can actually delete that if you want because what's really required is these things within brackets and the names here match the form fields that you've created meaning for you to receive the subject information that you're asking you need to place that within brackets okay always keep that in mind you can change anything you want as far as what is shown on the receiving end let's save changes and the messages options is all about what people see if there are errors or if the submission was successful and so on additional settings you may like to explore simply visit the plugin help section now let's save this form let's wrap it up once again we have a short code generated for us with the form id and the further details such as name let's copy that we've added a drop down menu link and we've actually modified the text area to be our unique text area furthermore you have many different options they all follow the same procedure for you to you know, manipulate as in edit delete and so on or add and so on let's go to all pages because i've created a sample page let's press edit a sample page that I'd like to paste the short code the form has generated for me so I could copy that and simply paste it anywhere that I want that form to show up let's update this page and let's go and view it and our contact form should be just the way we've customized it. the name field is required field so then let's just place a sample subject was optional so let's leave that aside and our select option would then look like this your message hello world now this is a required field that means it's smart for me to guide my website visitors as to that field being required so let's save changes let's refresh this page and as you can see let's quickly fill it out again subject was optional let's grab option two hello world and let's send this now let's send it oops it has been sent i know that's rather a silly example but the messages was coming from here so you can change all these fields if you want if you want to communicate different things when the form is submitted or if there are let's say error messages 
let's try and send this because I haven't filled these required fields contact form 7 will automatically create these notices so you can change them as well in the messages settings too now what happened I'll show you the receiving end is in my email client and on my email client this is what the contact form 7 will send to me so that I can see as you can see it has the option that I have chosen and the message body subject field wasn't filled in and it was from the name that I've provided and before we close this video session up, I'd like to show you the ID and class attribute and what they are all about. As we have placed ID as my form text area, what that means is now we can style the text area the way that we want. And we would do that through appearance, pressing on editor. And here, depending on the theme that you're using, the CSS file, you need to find it. And then, let's say, let's put a hashtag. And then, the name we've provided is ID attribute. And then, let's, as a sample, let's say, width is 400 pixels. And let's also set the background color to be okay let's say blue as a sample now we've just set an id attribute and styled it the way that we want right let's update the css file now that's updated let's refresh the page to see what happens to our text area and voila that's what the id attribute is all about you can also you know um, add a class attribute and further style it and so on at the end of the day using contact form 7 is very powerful once you get the hang of it and learn how to quickly and easily create your 